Okay, so I've got one of these inertia switches from a 1990 Ford Mustang LX 5 liter. You can see the part number on the casing there, the E1AE9341A2B. Uh, so wasn't able to find anything online already about this inertia switch, and I was having a fuel pump cutout issues on my Mustang. So I figured I would tear into it and share the information for others uh, looking for the same issue. So this is pretty much like every other inertia switch where there's the, the reset button at the top if there is an inertial uh, shutoff. Uh, mine was not resetting though. Um, verified through jumpering the inertia switch uh, connector first and that allowed the car to start so I pinpointed it to this itself. Um, so moved it from the car which is located in the, the rear left uh, in front of the tail light essentially so pretty easy to get at and this is a unserviceable part but if you try hard and believe in yourself you can service it. Uh, what I did is I took a couple of these uh, kind of dental picks and scored away at the edge uh, to keep making a score mark all the way around and then as I kind of made that progress I used just a couple screwdrivers flatheads and a small ball peen hammer to kind of make my way around the case after doing so get this into two parts so i'm gonna set this down here one second and yours will probably come apart and look something like this so this is a two contact setup there's a really you're just trying to create contact through it the resistance will also be low uh, this is where the inertia part comes in, so this little ball will bounce up whenever there's a collision at the rear of the car and shut off the fuel pump. So pretty simple theory of operation. Um, we've got a spring-loaded mechanism and then a reset arm here as well. So I'll have to take a second to put this back together here um, because it comes apart whenever you take it apart. All right, so here's how the switch will look with just the electrical parts and the uh, plastic actuators um, so you can see that currently focus we should have continuity between the two pins and if I were to check that you'd see that's true but we'll save ourselves the effort and whatever happens whenever there is an inertia shutdown is this arm at the top here is going to actuate upward and you'll see that there is now a gap between this guy and that guy. So there's no longer continuity. What somehow happened on mine was this arm was tucked behind, so it was no longer able to actuate. So to reset, this can't just be pushed down on its own, and this guy can't be pushed over just on its own. I always, can't really see underneath my hand there, I always spring back. That's where the first plastic piece comes in. Is this little actuator. So you put it in its hole. This is going to, whenever rotate, I'm gonna push against the middle of that spring. And now we're gonna have continuity again. And the device is reset. So I'm gonna turn the camera off again real quick and put the plastic parts back together. All right, so I got it back together. Took a couple trial and errors there. Um, first idea did not work out, so I just want to give a couple tips there. It'd be best if you leave the two plastic parts on the same side as each other, and then um, use a like a dental pick to line up the shaft into the, the side that has more of the metallic parts. And keep in mind that the two terminals have notches uh, that they need to find home into whenever lining up the two halves so it takes a little bit of finagling which will get the part back together and it does work so um, so this is the reset button everything is reset and good to go right now if I give it a wiggle you can hear that ball jumped up and smacked it so now if I 
push the button, you'll hear that little click. And that means everything's good to go and we're back into a continuity. So I'm gonna do that one more time. There you go. All right, so one last thing to check. Let's make sure we have continuity across the pins. It shouldn't be much because it's just a piece of copper in there. So I wouldn't expect more than a couple tenths of an ohm. We're gonna give that a look through here. And there we have 0.3 ohms for this one. So all set to go, just need to tape it up and reinstall and we'll be able to drive safely again.